Hello guys, this is Apostle Jason and Penny Leopard. Penny Leopard. That's my second half. Welcome to uh, Kingdom Network TV. Uh, we're going to be talking about um, uh, honor today. Uh, honor. Uh, honoring your uh, your better half. And uh, not also just honoring your better half, but we're going to be talking about um, we're going to be talking about honoring um, how to honor and what is honor. So we're going to be talking about honor. Period. So uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we would like for you to subscribe at the bottom if you would uh, push the bell and you'll get more uh, videos like this. Uh, we would appreciate it. And subscribe. Subscribe, hit the bell, and boom, boom, you have videos. Right then. Boom, boom. <laughs> boom, boom. All right, guys, we're going to be talking about honor. Where you at? We are in, uh, um, we're going to be in uh, First Peter. Chapter 3. We're going to be in 1 Peter chapter 3 today. Alright guys, uh, we're going to be talking about honor. Um, let's invite the Holy Spirit in. Father, we just thank you Lord for what you're doing. Holy Spirit, come and teach us. And God, Lord, give us what we need to say to your children and whoever watches this video. And Lord, we just thank you today, Lord, that you are glorious, Lord, that you are wonderful, and Lord, that you came and humbled yourself and honored us. Lord, you were King of kings and the Lord of lords. Lord, you had such a high position, but you lowered yourself to honor us, and it's amazing what honor can do. And Lord, we just thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. We're going to be talking about honor today. We we know that uh, Jesus uh, come down and honored us. He honored us to a point that he went out of his position of authority and come down and humbled himself to honor us with his presence. Uh, he showed it by washing our washing the disciples' feet. He showed it by uh, saying, uh, who's the greatest in the kingdom? He said, who becomes the least? So our job is not to outdo each other. No. It's to honor each other and respect one another. That's the, that's the key, is respecting one another. Honor ties to respect. And that's what God was dealing with me this morning, was respecting and honor. Um, uh, even though... The, the wife is the weaker vessel, the Bible says. She is honored because she brings forth a child and multiplies. She, she has roles that she does, and she multiplies doing it. Uh, but she's got some strengths. And when you honor somebody, you look for them strengths instead of their weaknesses and focus on their weaknesses instead of their strengths. I mean... You focus on their strengths instead of their weaknesses. And that's what Jesus did to the church. He focused in on their their strengths instead of their weaknesses. He, he didn't condone sin, but he strengthened them in their strengths and, and, and took their sin and loved them out of their sin. That's, that's what happened with a woman that committed adultery. Remember, they was throwing stones, and he said, Woman, uh, 
go and sin no more. But he said, who, who has a stone to throw now? So he loved her out of her sin. He honored her, even though she was in the wrong. But he honored her and loved her and respected her anyways. And it changed her. So in 1 Peter chapter 3 says, Likewise, ye wives, be subject unto your own husbands, that if they obey not, uh, obey not the word, they may be without the word by one by the conversation of the wives. While this, behold, your chastened conversation coupled with fear, verse 3, with uh, whose adoring let us not be outward adoring of a planting the hair or wearing of the gold or putting on apparel. So what what is what is Peter talking about here? Peter's talking about uh, you know a lot of people thinks you know it, it's okay that your wife fixes up and all this stuff and it, it's pleasing to the man's eye, but see God wants the woman to look beautiful on the inside. And a lot of men, they, they look for beautiful women and all this stuff. They got And no, don't get me wrong. It, it is a part of a man looking at a woman on the outer appearance. But right here, Peter was addressing, while well, behold, the chess and conversation a couple with fear. Um, whose adoring let them not be the outward adoring of planting the hair, wearing the gold, putting the apparel, but let them be hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible. So otherwise he said work on the inside first and then the outside will come. But see, we work on the outside first and we look pretty on the outside, but we're, we're looking pretty ugly on the inside. That's what he, Peter was talking about. And verse 4 says, let be, but let it be hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible corruptible even the uh, a garment of meek and quiet spirit so see a meek and quiet spirit is a reflection of what's on the inside see when you're meek and quiet that that reflects what's on the inside of you otherwise when you put on clothes you show how pretty you are on the outside but when you're meek and quiet you show how beautiful you are on the inside good teaching which is in the sight of God a great price. See, God likes me and he likes a quiet spirit. Um, verse 5 says, For after this manner in the old time, in the holy woman also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjects unto their own husbands, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Um whose daughters you are, as long as you do well and not afraid of any amazement. Verse 7 says, Likewise, you husbands, do well with them according to knowledge, giving honor to the wife, as unto the weaker vessel, as being heirs together of the grace of love. So it's the same concept with us, with Jesus. Same concept. So it's with us, with Jesus, same concept. We're, we are the bride of Christ. See, we should love our wives like Christ loves the church that he gave himself up for. So we, we what, what is the main thing that God wants from us as the body of Christ, as the bride of Christ? He wants to use our body. Why, why is that? Because Jesus said, this is my body, it is broken for you. He gave his body to it. So what I'm saying? And that's what men ought to do to their wives. See, that's why it's important to have a, and I'm just going to say it, a, a great sex life. Why? Why is that? Because you're giving your body to one another. And I see more divorce rates you wouldn't believe because of this matter. Their sex life has, it's, it's ruined. It's no good. There's there's cracks and holes in it. Why why is that the body of Christ? The, let me tell you something, friend. One day when Jesus comes back, he's going to take in a new body. Why why is the body important to him? Because the body of Christ, Jesus' body was broken for us. 
Why was it broken? Because he wants to use our body now. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. We, we are a body. So there's a mystery in a marriage. There's a mystery in a husband and a wife. Because it's the same mystery the bride of Christ is to the church. He's going to come back and get his body. Well, what does that mean? That means that he's going to take that body on himself. And I'm going to tell you something. There's no greater experience to be with people in person, shaking their hand, hugging their neck, making them feel welcome. Why is that? Because the touching is another thing than just hearing. You ever seen the movie Ghost? Patrick Swayze, he comes in there, he dies. He just wants to touch his wife. He's in the spirit, but he wants to touch his wife in the body. And he uses the other body. That's the same concept. Same concept. All these movies, I'm telling you, if you'll watch them, they, they line up with the Word of God. Amen? That, that's the same concept that he's talking about here. So, verse 7 says, Likewise, you husbands, to well with them according to knowledge, giving honor to, to the, the wife as unto the weaker vessel, as being heirs together of, of the grace of life. That, uh, that your prayers not be hindered. Why would your prayers be hindered? Because if you can't love what, one another and be in unity, then your prayers will be hindered. A husband and wife, if they have something odd against each other, you, you go pray to God. If there's something corrupt between the two, see what I'm saying? Just like in the garden, Adam and Eve... They, they let the enemy in and between them, guess what happened? They did what? They separated. So what God is joined together, let no man put under. What I'm saying is, if Satan has come between what God has joined together, then don't think you're going to serve God by yourself, because you're not. We serve God together as one. Um... Verse 8 says, uh, Finally, be ye all one mind, having compassion one for another. See what I'm saying? Having compassion. Love as brethren, be pitiful, uh, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil, railing for railing, but uh, counterwise blessing, knowing that you are thereunto called, that you should inherit a blessing. Verse 10 says, um, for he that will love life will see good days. Let him reframe his tongue from evil and his lips to speak no goal. Verse 11 says, Let him eschew us evil and do good. Let him seek peace and eschew it. For the eye, verse 12 says, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. Now watch this. See, I've seen the eyes of the Lord in the sky. I did. I seen it with my physical eye, guys. But here's what he says in verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. <laughs> Ain't that wonderful? And his ears are open into their prayers. But what does he call righteousness? See, I want to deal with that just for a minute. What does he call righteousness? Here's what he calls righteousness. He calls righteousness faith. What did Abraham, how did Abraham get right with God? Was it through his works or through his faith? See, faith without works is dead. If we trust in God, if we believe in God, we'll live for God. See, it, it deflects our lifestyle of who we are because our faith is a evidence to what something we believe in. So that's why he said, that Abraham was right with God because he his faith. Abraham had faith. He believed in something that he could not see. But if we suffer for righteous sake, uh, where was I? Um, okay, verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto the prayers, but his face, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. So God turns his face around when people do evil. He does. And 13 says, And and who whom 
is he that will harm you if he be followers of that which is good uh, verse 14 but if you suffer for righteousness sake happy are ye be not afraid of terror neither be troubled 15 says but sanctify the Lord God in your heart and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of hope that is in the meekness and fear having a good consent that wherein we speak of evil of you and evildoers they ashamed and falsely accusers your good conversation in Christ. Verse 17, we're about finished guys. For it is better if the will of God be so that you suffer for doing well than doing evil. So there is going to be a suffering for doing doing well. People, people will persecute you. Nobody will be your friend no more because you live a right life and they don't. Why, why is that? Because it's not easy following Christ. Because the whole world is following Satan. Broad is the way of destruction, but narrow is the way that finds the righteousness and goodness. <clears throat> Otherwise, there ain't too many people following God no more. Not too many. You got something to say, Mom? Oh, keep reading. Um, 17. Sixteen. No, 17, I'm sorry. For it is better, 17 says, For it is better if the will of God be so, that you suffer in doing well and doing evil. For 18, for Christ also once suffered for his for sins, that just for unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickening by the Spirit. Uh, verse 19, But which also that he went and preached unto the Spirit's, in prison, verse 20, uh, which sometimes we are disobedient when once we are long-suffering of God, waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. The light figure uh, were unto even baptism doeth also now save us, not putting away our filthy of the flesh, but the answer of the good consents towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Verse 22, who is gone unto heaven is on the right hand of God. Angels and authorities and powers be made subject unto him. So I'm going to read that one more time. Angels and authorities. What, what is he talking about when he says authorities? Let me tell you something. There's many authority in the heavenly realm. There's many authority in the principal realm. That's why the Bible says in Ephesians 6, we do not wrestle with principalities. We do not wrestle flesh and blood, but principalities. Principalities. What does that mean, principalities? That means that there's authority in the earth that is ranked. See, the earth, the earth in Matthew 4, uh, that's why uh, Satan come and told Jesus to bow down and worship him, I'll give you the kingdoms of the world. What is he talking about? Kingdoms of this world. So that means he was over the kingdoms of this world. So we are in a world today that Satan is over, but he's only over it because man gave him the authority in the mm -hmm. flesh. So us being renewed, us being saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Spirit, we now have authority in the earth and in the heavens because we're joint heirs with Jesus Christ so being joint heirs of Jesus Christ makes us have authority over all heaven and earth that's why Jesus walked up to Peter and said I give you the keys of the kingdom whatsoever things you bind on earth should be bound in heaven why because you have authority now over heaven and earth ain't that awesome we we can speak things now here on the earth because heaven is over the earth. See, Satan had only authority with you when you was in the flesh and when you were serving him. He had authority over you. He told you where to come and go. He had bondages. There's people in bondages watching this right now. You're in bondage. You're in bondage and, and you have to do what he says to do where he says to go. He, When he possesses your body, he's got control of it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say, well, I don't know what made me do it. Something made me do it. I don't know what made me do it. The devil made me do it. 
I, I've seen people kill people in Columbine High School. The little boy walked in and said the devil made him do it and told him to do it. Who is your master today? I just want to know. Let me tell you something. If it's the Lord Jesus Christ, then you have authority over heaven and earth. And see, our relationship, it has to be, she has to be submitted to him. I have to be submitted to him for this to work out. Because if she ain't submitted and I'm submitted, guess what's going to happen? A kingdom divided will never stand. So if me and you are divided and you worshiping Satan and his kingdom and his authority, me and you're going to begin to have problems. Because now I have, a, I have authority over the earth and heaven, but she only has authority over the earth. And I'm using her for an example. That's why marriages never work out. Because they follow Satan and what Satan tells them to do. Listen, who are you following today? Is your marriage in trouble? Is your relationship in trouble? Are, are you in trouble? Are you, are you just in trouble where you don't think, well, I don't know what to do anymore. My marriage is going down. Listen, y'all both got to line up with the main authority, which is Jesus Christ. Y'all both got to be listening to him. Because if you're not, your marriage is going to begin to fall. Why? Because Satan desires to swift you as wheat. I don't care if you're saved. I don't care if you've been sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't care what you are. He desires to swift you like wheat. He desires to get you back on his side. But I'm telling you something, my friend. It's been 22 years. I ain't going back on his side. Sorry. I done... I done What's that song say? I done uh, went too long now, ain't turning around. Mm -hmm. uh, what? Come too far to look back. Come too far to look back. I ain't going back no more. I don't want his kingdom. His kingdom has nothing for me. This world don't have nothing for me. And that's why the Bible says to love the world is your enemy to God. If you love this world and think, let, don't get me wrong, guys. I enjoy my house. I enjoy my fishing poles. I enjoy my little gidget gadget. I enjoy it, but it don't define me where I'm going. It, it don't define me where I'm going. Listen, some people worship these things more, and they neglect what God's told them to do. Seriously. God gives them a bass boat. Guess where they at? On the water on Sunday. That's where they at. They're worshiping the things of this world instead of the things of God. So here, here's, here's the dilemma. Whose authority are you under right now? Whose authority? Because a house divided will never stand. If she ain't listening to God, I'm listening to God, and she's listening to the devil, and she's doing what the devil's telling her to do, we're going to have problems, always. But who, who do you know who's submitting and who's not? Here, here's the key. Who's in the Word and who's not? Who's praying who's not? Who's doing what they need to be doing to feed their spirit? I, I, I'm trying to tell you that if you neglect these things, don't think that your spirit man is going to fall in, in temptation. Because that's one thing Jesus... Uh, when he walked this world, he stayed close to God. <clears throat> you can stay close to God in the Word. You can stay close to God in prayer, speaking in tongues. Listen, if you got the gift of tongues, pray in the Spirit sometimes. I do. Just automatically, I'll be in the shower and pray in the Spirit. Why do I do that? Because I know my spirit, man, is willing, but my flesh is weak. I know Satan can use my flesh in a matter of moments. If I'm giving in to my flesh. Mm -hmm. We got to stay out of our flesh, guys. If you want to do what honor says, giving honor to the weaker vessel, giving honor to one another, stay out of the flesh. And I, um, Galatians 5, tell, I'm not going to go there, but you can read it yourself. Galatians 5 talks about the works of the flesh, guys. Rage, anger, jealousy, all the works of the flesh you want to know. And, and another thing you'll know when people are in the Spirit and walking in the Spirit, they'll have the fruits of the Spirit. 
which is love, peace, joy, kindness, meekness, goodness, long suffering. Th those are the people that's walking in the spirit. And Galatians tells us all about the works of the flesh. So you want to say something? No, I'm good. I'm good. We need to submit to our husbands as the he submits unto God, and then we we everything works out a whole lot smoother, better, spiritually, naturally, physically. So this this is it. We we got to submit to one another a, as we submit unto Christ. Mm -hmm. And. Guys, I'm going to tell you something, I'll say this and I'm going to end. Guys, if you have an unbelieving spouse, if you have somebody that just keeps running with the devil, <clears throat> God has not called you to that. Sorry. Now, can you believe for that person to be saved? Yeah, but you're not a punching bag. Okay, I, I've seen people get black eyes. Well, I love this man, but he. we watched a movie the other night of the man he was an atheist but she was a Christian mm -hmm. and how difference and conflict they had at all time anything that had to do with their faith they had a conflict why was that because he was following Satan and she was following God so don't think that you can get in a relationship and you see red flags you better heed to them red flags because if it has any characteristics of Satan, they're following Satan. Listen, we cannot follow the God of this world. We follow the God of that world. And that world is soon to come and this world is soon to die. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word won't. Listen, this earth is soon to be gone. It's going to burn up in ashes. I'm telling y'all. So watch who you're following. All right, guys, we're going to get off here. Listen, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel down at the bottom. I'll tell you one more time, hit the bell. Listen, share this uh, share this channel um, wherever you want to, on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, wherever you can put the link at, share it. Help us, help us uh, reach, reach people for the gospel. And uh, I'm going to put our... Uh, website up here um, we we have banners just coming across here anyways off through this video but we uh have a slack app listen go on there and download the slack app look us up on the slack app we also have a uh ways to donate uh money um uh cash app and the paypal app if you want to so um that would be great all right, guys, thank you for tuning in. This is Apostle Jason and Penny Leopard. Penny Leopard, we are signing off here. Y'all have a wonderful week. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you. Be blessed.